Yay, that's me. Bubbles. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. And I'm still doing my adjusting. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Let's see, how's my height there? I think I can probably do this. Yeah, that looks good. Hello. Hey, can you hear me okay? Am I talking too low? Let me see, let me try this. I'm still adjusting my height. Hello, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, so as you come on, you can see uh, this is how I hang out. Hey, Rita. This is how I hang out. Hey, Wendy and Lisa. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for tuning in. I always like to come on and let you see how I've just been hanging out. I've only been home. Hi, Michelle. I've only been home for maybe an hour. And hi, Michelle. I'm another Michelle. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And so as soon as I got in, I just had to lay down. And um, hey, Rita. Hey, Kendra. Uh, and put my put my hair up, put my scarf on. So I'm gonna take it down. But I just always like for you guys to see, you know, how I hang out in the house, what I do, what I do. Let me see, taking this thing out. Um, but my hair is still straight. A third Michelle. Wow, Michelles are dominating the scope. Ritas, you know, um, there are two Ritas, and I understand Rita um, Miller has a change in her schedule, so she may not be on. So Michelles are definitely dominating the scope and that looks like if i'm correct that's dion right a guy <laughs> so um okay i got it right okay so thank you thank you dion thank you for tuning in everyone this is me still with my straight hair hey judith how are you <laughs> thank you all for tuning in yeah my hair can't all fit in this scope but if i bring it down here you can kind of see where where we get to right um, so let me bring this back up, bring this back up. Here we go. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good was missing in action. You sure were. <laughs> you sure were. Ah, oh, wonderful. Hi, Natalie from Montreal. Thank you so much for tuning in. And hello, uh, thank you for tuning in from France. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you. And this is eight days because... You know, it was done Sunday of last week. So I'm hanging on. Rita, I'm going to try and hang on. Remember I said I'm going to try to do two weeks? <laughs> Hi, um, Sean. Thank you. Thank you from Texas. Thank you so much. And hello from Romania. Thank you. Hi, Tanea. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. So um, I'd like to do my introductions for for any newbies on the scope tonight. My name is Abena Palmore. I am a natural hairstylist. I work in a salon in the Bronx called the Gifted Hair Clinic. It's located at 3511 Boston Road, corner of East Chester, near um, the Co-op City area, which is a landmark area of the Bronx. And it is the northern part of the Bronx, which is near to West Chester, for those of you who may or may not be familiar with the New York City area. Um, I'm in the salon. Um, and we're going to do the blog party really early here. I'm in the salon on from Tuesdays through Saturdays by appointment only. To make an appointment with me, you go online to styleseat.com slash Abena Palmore. Abena Palmore is spelled A-B-E-N-A-P-A-L-M-O-R-E. And so if you're able to come into salon, book your appointment. If not, that was my hand, by the way. If not, you can always find me on various social media platforms. You can find me on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Embrace Natural Beauty, where I share simple tips and techniques that have been helpful to me in my very own natural hair journey, which has been four and a half years, that have helped me to maintain my hair, to keep it in good condition, and to retain length, which was always my goal. And so I want all of my followers and all of my viewers to better maintain your hair, to keep it in good condition, so that you too, yes, go ahead and block, so that you too may enjoy your hair and embrace natural beauty of your own. And so that's my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook at Embrace Natural Beauty, on Instagram at Embrace underscore natural underscore beauty. 
and on Twitter and Periscope here at Embrace in Beauty. That's Embrace in for Natural Beauty. So thank you so much for tuning in. And when I'm talking, if I'm answering a question and someone is doing something or saying something disrespectful on the scope, you all are welcome to block. I think it, I think it works. So please, you know, go ahead and block. We don't want anyone uh, disrupting our conversation. Um, so another note, I'm going to give you two more notes. It is Palm Sunday and I got my palm. Hope you all got your palms today. It's kind of bent. <laughs> there is four, There are four Michelles on here tonight. Hey, Michelle <laughs> in Manhattan um, and hi, Anonymous. Okay, so yeah, I got my palm today and the message from uh, the guest preacher who is a, is, is a, I believe he's a bishop. No, he's not a bishop, excuse me, scratch that. Um, another preacher came to our church and he said, you know, this palm represents uh, God's presence, uh, God's provision, and God's promise. So uh, normally I get my palm and I'm just like, okay, thank you. That was nice. But this Sunday, this Palm Sunday, it really, I love that message and it meant so much to me. So I wanted to hold on to my palm and just share that with you all. So I hope you all had a wonderful Palm Sunday as well. You're in, uh, in Morocco. Okay. You're, you're fine until you, you know, as long as you stay respectful in the scope, you're fine. Um, and then another note, I know Rita, you're always so helpful for me when it comes to the timing to make sure that we get off and get back on for YouTube. But what I want to share is that um, what I'm doing now with the scope is I'm just concentrating so much on having the conversation that you and all we all have together. And if it's possible, I will gladly upload it to YouTube. Um, and if not, you know, I'll try and find another way to get the um, information to them that they may have missed. But the, the discussion tonight is focused on you guys, and so we're going to go the full time, and um, and we'll just have, you know, our discussion. So tonight, I really didn't have a topic, you know, that I wanted to discuss, you know, like nothing profound, uh, but there's always something going on in the natural hair community. We're always doing something with our hair, you know, our regimen, and so forth. And so for those of you who are looking at me now, you see my hair straight yet again. And I had gone an entire year without straightening my hair. The entire year 2015, I didn't straighten my hair at all. And then here I go, 2016, I straightened my hair not once but twice in the first quarter. So you saw me straighten my hair in January and then here again in March. And there was a good two month period in between. So um, some people had commented, wow, Bane, I'm surprised to see you, you know, straighten your hair so soon. And it would seem soon, especially since I dropped the video in February. So it may seem like it was just a couple of weeks ago that my hair was straight, but technically it was a whole two months in between. And so that led me to want to talk with you all um, about how often is safe for you to straighten your hair. And so um, I'll give you my ideas, my thoughts, and um, you know we can chit chat about that. And plus we can talk about other things as you have questions and comments that you want to share. My hair still looks lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, when I get on the scope, I get hand in hair syndrome. So I'm trying to keep my hands out of my hair. Trying, trying. And now I'm going to take a swig of water because I parched. So do you guys have any questions <laughs> about the straight hair? Hi, Kim from Michigan. Okay, I'll just start talking and if you have questions, I'll try and try and look. Because once I start answering or saying something, it's hard for me to stay on topic if I'm looking at questions. Um, oh, hey, Fawn. Yeah, I st I'm still rocking this blowout, girl. How high was the blow dryer? The blow dryer was not high at all. It really was not high. And Fawn does what I do. Starts off very low and then increases as necessary. Thank you. Yes, it is beautiful. Thank you for a wonderful job on my hair. That's Fawny, by the way. Salon Noah. Fawny's the one who actually did the blow dry and flat iron on my hair. Repeat, I love you, Karen, please. Okay, I, I don't know what that means. How do you prevent heat damage on fine hair? <laughs> Thank you, Fawn. So, yeah, that's a good question. That's right. See, that's Fawn right there. She's saying, me, 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 me. She's the one who did my hair. You see the hand up? That's me, me, me. That's Fawn. That's Salon Noah. So, um, what I wanted to say, okay, so when you're straightening fine hair, 
Um, everyone has different schools of thought. The way that you approach it, you know, as a professional is you're always seeking to make sure you give the client the straight hair that they want. <laughs> and I, I like that, Rita. You want to give the client the straight hair that they want, but you also have to take so many factors into consideration. So how fine the hair is, is going to be a factor. Also, how much moisture the person has in their hair. So if they've been going for a long period of time without um, getting moisture into their hair, like if they've been doing um, the type of styling, like protective styling, braid styling, or anything where they're not getting moisture to their hair for a considerable amount of time, when they come to you to get their hair straightened, their hair may be um, extremely dry. So you really have to be careful. And, and that's the kind of situation or condition. Yeah, please block, block, because when I'm talking, I'm trying to keep focus on, on, on answering. Um, so that's the kind of condition where you want to add more product, like leave-in conditioner, like moisturizer. And so that's not going to give you this type of, you know, um, outcome because you're trying to protect the hair. If you go at fine, dry hair with the same approach that you would go to, you know, hair that is healthy like mine, um, okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's gone. Um, <laughs> what's going to happen is you will experience, you know, um, potential heat damage. My hair is very healthy. I get moisture to it on a regular basis. I have good moisture retention. Again, my hair is healthy. Those, and my hair is also not fine. I have normal uh, density hair. I don't have coarse hair. I don't have fine hair. I'm right in the middle. So my hair can stand the normal um, amount of heat. You don't have to go extra light on my hair. But if my hair, if your hair is fine, and your hair is dry, that's when you're gonna to need to put more product and so it won't be this light and bouncy because you have to have that product. You have to have some type of moisturizer in there to keep that hair supple and keep it from being too dry in order to sustain that heat. So you have to approach, there's so many different factors you have to approach, you know, the heat styling process depends specifically on that person's, the condition of their hair. So. Um, Every one, but what I also try to do and what Fawny does as well is one pass. So, you know, the temperature gauge, uh, my temperature that Fawn did was at, Fawny did was at 390. Yes. And that's Fawny right there saying, seek a professional. I know a number of you want to do, you know, do it yourself. You know, you can get these tools, any store you can get these tools. But if your goal is to retain length, if your goal is to enjoy your natural curl pattern and without having it hindered, then you do want to go to a professional and not just anyone. You want to make sure that that person has a track record of taking care of their hair and taking care of their client's hair. And so you can always ask for references and you can always you know, check them out as well. So a number of us are on social media so you can see what we're doing on a regular basis. You can follow us. And you can also ask, um, you know, our clientele, you know, for references. So hydration treatment helps. It, treatments are vital. They are vital steps. Um, you know, the condition of the hair does not change automatically with a treatment. A treatment will help to boost, you know, a moisture level and also provide a level of protein for that protection. So treatments are definitely absolute. But as a professional, you would be able to see the condition of that person's hair before you put the treatment in. Uh, my hair is fine and low porosity. Last time I flat ironed it, it came out beautiful, but my ends were, were straight. So you mean your ends stayed straight, which means my ends were straight when I got it. Yeah, so your, your ends, protein treatments may help with heat damage. So thank you, Rita. So it sounds like your ends were... The ends, you have to remember, your ends are weathered more so than the rest of your hair. The ends of your hair are older. Um, they're most likely more porous, and um, therefore they're, they're not holding in as much moisture, so they're drier. They're not as, you know, as strong as the rest of your hair. This portion up here, closer to the root, is the strongest portion of your hair. And so you'll notice um, when, when flat ironing, uh, what I do and what other professionals may do is we start off and we bump this twice. This can handle it, whereas the part down here can only handle a little bit. So yeah, this part right here is the oldest part of your hair. This, this portion right here is the oldest part of your hair. 
Um, and so you really have to be careful. And that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you, the ends of your hair was not able to take it. And it may just be time to cut it off, too. Do you think the type of flat iron used matters, tourmaline or titanium? Um, you know, tools are important. I don't purchase tools from regular consumer outlets. I usually purchase my my gear when I go to trade shows that are geared toward professionals. Um, I, I try to stick to, you know, the the devices, the tools that are specifically tailored or, or introduced to the professional market first and that have reached certain standards of high grade quality. Um, as far as titanium and, and what's the other one? Um, it was titanium. I think the other one starts with a C. I'm, I'm not so much versed on which one is better, but um, no, it wasn't tourmaline. It was not ceramic. Yeah, so what I'm looking for is the quality of the iron itself. Is it going to be able to heat the hair without burning the hair? And so usually what I do is I watch demonstrations and they actually allow you to handle the tool as well on their model. So you can actually see for yourself how that, you know, flat iron is, is impacting that person's hair. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Everyone like ceramic, tourmaline. Um, is heat damage possible with hard bonnet dryer? Heat damage is possible whenever heat is applied to the hair. So if you're using a blow dryer, you can sustain heat damage. If you are using a blow dryer on dry hair, and when I say dry hair, I don't mean hair that's not wet. <laughs> I mean hair that's like brittle, um, that's really lacking in moisture you can sustain heat damage. So it's always important before you do your blow drying to make sure that you're applying some level of um, moisturizer so that hair has some, some type of protection. And depending on the condition of the hair, you may want to put you know all of your heat protection on before you do the blow dry. And I stop right there. It's like, it's like a finale. It's like dramatic. I know I do that sometimes. Um, Abena, I think you mentioned this before, but what are your thoughts on protein treatments on low pro on low po hair? Um, I like protein treatments that are not um, that are not the kind that that make your hair hard. I try to stay away from anything that makes the hard uh, makes the hair change. So I like for I like those protein treatments that you can put on, like the one I used from Hydrotherma Naturals, where your hair is still soft, but you're still getting a portion of protein applied to your hair. Ah, someone said kitchen straightening. Anyone? No, thank you. <laughs> Go into the salon and and get your hair done. It's hard to determine. Uh, oh, that's someone else answering. What are some good heat protectants? And Salima Cartwright, okay. All right, so you guys are answering each other's questions and that's fine. Um, someone asked me a question and I wanna try and answer. So about, I think I answered about protein treatment for low porosity hair and if I didn't, just, just come back at me with that one. Cause a whole bunch of comments went at the same time. Like I kinda got lost. I used to do that kitchen straightening but not anymore. I know we all did. When I grew up, my grandmother used to do the hot, the hot iron on our hair, you know, and we didn't experience, we didn't experience heat damage. <laughs> yes. Hydrotherma Naturals is Salima Cartwright. Yes. Yes. So did you did, oh, what was the name of the protein treatment that you used? It was, um, I don't have the, I don't have an front of me or do I? Hang on, maybe I do. <clears throat> oh yeah, because I almost finished this bottle. This bottle is pretty much finished. So this is Hydrotherma Naturals Amino Plus Protein Deep Conditioning Treatment. You can see the bottle right here. Yeah, so what I like about this is it leaves the hair, you know, feeling the same way it did when you when you applied it. So it doesn't change it, doesn't make it stiff, doesn't make it hard, but you are still getting a very good level of protein. Plus, I, I use a protein treatment um, 
in the salon by LRC. And I, I want to mention that because I know Dion is on here and he'll be like, hey, how about LRC? You know, you know. So there's a wonderful protein treatment that I use by LRC in the salon. It's called Potion. And so, hey, you're welcome. Anytime. Are you still going to? Yes. All right. So the reviews. My schedule has been so crazy. Just just so you guys know, when I, I when I used to try to find time in between appointments, okay, Rita, <laughs> I used to try to find time in between appointments to do the um, to do my video production. And I've been traveling, and when I come back, since I've been traveling so much, when I come back, my schedule has literally been um, rock solid. And uh, Bonnie, I hope you're. I hope you're still around after the scope because I want to call you later. I want to talk about that. Some things that we talked about when I was in Virginia Beach. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Dion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for telling me I'm here. Inspiration for you. I appreciate it. And that's what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, my schedule. Oh, thank you, Fonny. I really appreciate it. I'm definitely going to give you a call after this. So yeah, my schedule has been so crazy. I have not had the time to actually put together any of my videos like I normally would um, because you can imagine standing all day working with the clients. By the time I'm done, I love what I do, but I am beat tired. So <laughs> I've not been able to do any videos. So what I'll probably do in lieu of uh, like a recorded production like I normally do on YouTube is I may just go ahead and sit down and do a... Do a um, do a review with you guys on the scope and I can just tell you you know more extensively about the about the products but the thing about it is when I record when I'm washing my hair with the products is I also give myself visual notes so I'm still gonna have to review the materials so I can see exactly what I experienced as I was using the product so that's still gonna that's why I can't do it like right now and say immediately because you know I did the um, reviews or I tried the products back in December with full intentions of turning around in a couple of weeks and doing those videos and it just didn't happen that way. And I know you guys want to like, it's like bad bana, bad bana, but I'm not like neglecting you guys like that kind of like, I don't have to do it. It's not that at all. I literally, the time just got so far away from me. And so I, I don't remember the, the level of detail that, you know, I would if it was fresh. So I have to look at the recordings and see what I said when I was applying the product. So I hope to get that to you. Um, holistic approach to life, ladies, not just hair. Check out modern Mrs. Huxtables. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of random, but then you guys are having questions too. So, um, one more question. How often should one with low porosity hair use protein treatment? So protein treatments is something that's done based on the condition of your hair, in my opinion. And so it's not something that you do. Oh, thank you, Rita, for blocking whomever needed to be blocked. Protein treatments is not just something you just do randomly because you have products that contain protein, you know, with with um, normal um, maintenance or, or manipulation, like not overly manipulated hair, you'll do fine. That's what conditioners are for. Conditioners are meant to condition the hair. It, you, you're going to be wearing it, you're going to be washing it, and you're going to be sweating in it, you're going to be getting it dirty, but you're also going to be washing that off and then conditioning your hair and your conditioner should contain some level of protein. Protein treatments are um, generally done in the salon uh, with some type of, you know, some type of service that's going to be aggressive and also based on the conditioning of your hair. If you've gone for long periods of time and have experienced, you know, a, a certain, you sustain a, a certain number of damage that the stylist can see, your professional stylist can see, oh, you stand in need of not just a protein treatment, but there are several types of protein treatments. I personally have at least five different protein treatments that I will consider based on what's going on with your hair, which one I'm going to apply to your hair. So, and not all of them are commercially available. Like I, I you know, you can go into the store and pick up certain things, but there are certain things that we have um, that are just for salons. So, oh, thank you for, for following and thank you for tuning in. So. When you do a protein treatment, I recommend something that's light, nothing too heavy that's going to actually damage your hair. Like I showed you, um, one that's you know very um, accessible retail-wise is the Hydroderma Naturals um, Deep Conditioning Treatment, which I highly recommend. So that's one you can consider. I know a number of people like Afrogy, but I also know that some people had experienced 
like protein overload with it. So that's why I haven't, um, uh, that's why I haven't, you know, that's not, that's why I can't recommend it because I can't speak from experience, but I do have it. I do intend to try this one as well. I just have to have, you know, a need for the protein treatment. You're not a fan of Apogee? Yeah, no, I have a couple of people on here, um, at least one in particular I know who actually loves it, so I can't completely rule it out. But again, it's all based on the condition of your hair while you're using this particular protein treatment. You just don't want to use a protein treatment just to be using a protein treatment. Um, but thanks for the other recommendation. You're welcome. Anytime, anytime, anytime. So with me, with heat styling and how often is, you know, often enough, you really don't know how often you can do it without sustaining damage until you sustain damage, right? So why even chance it? I particularly, <laughs> uh, I particularly, we're, we're, okay, I'm going to answer you guys about the protein treatment that I just shared with you a moment ago. Um, but I just wanted to say this part. When it comes to like how often we should heat style, like I, the year before had only done it three times in a year. And that was each time I got my hair trimmed. So I actually trimmed my hair after um, after this one because I'm like, I'm not going to have my hair straight and not trim it. So I trimmed the ends because um, I could see where it needed to be trimmed. Um, so um, when I get my hair straightened, it has only been three times a year. So this year has been twice. I don't plan to straighten it again until after the summer, most likely sometime in November. And I will, I will also follow that up with a trim. How often do I trim? My hair has been well maintained since I since I did the big chop. I, you know, just that was my focus, making sure that my hair was healthy. So in the beginning stages, I was trimming it every three months, and then it was every three or four months. Um, I did sustain some level of damage after I had a cut in September of 2015, and so because of that, I felt comfortable trimming my ends. Uh, two months between so I had my hair trimmed in January which was four months after that September cut and then I had it trimmed again or I trimmed yeah I trimmed it again this week so that was two months and if I feel like the ends you know are looking raggedy again you know more raggedy than usual I will trim it in two months otherwise I may go to three months so for general if you're not as careful about you know uh, maintaining your hair I think it's best to do it every two months just to make sure because you have I have been natural for four and a half years um, the reason why I would say two months is because if you go longer your hair is going to get worn out anyway why wait until it starts splitting and, and chipping to cut it and when it starts splitting and, and chipping it's going to start breaking off and entangling around other hairs, so it's going to cause you more. <laughs> so it's going to cause you more uh, tangles, and what entangles cause um, breakage. So when you get those groups of hairs that come off, like I don't have any hair. Like I see this in the salon all the time when I'm when I'm detangling my client's hair. If I see like a group of hair that comes off, it's because one hair broke off wrapped around a whole bunch of other hairs and then got tangled and now you're losing like you know several strands of hair unnecessarily that could have been avoided so it's just better you know you're going to need to trim it if you trim it systematically you know every two months you will avoid having hairs that pull out groups of other hairs so even if you don't press it often um vintage gal whose name i've got moment i didn't catch the first part of your question so i'm lost Chandra, okay, thank you, hon. Chandra, I'll try to remember. I'll try to remember. Thank you, thank you. So what do you think about blow drying with only cool setting, especially for low porosity hair? I don't know. If it, if it gets the hair dry, you know, you're welcome to do it. I have an experience where um, I've been able to get the hair dry doing it on cool. I like to start off on cool just to try to minimize as much heat that I'm giving, but I haven't seen where you can actually dry the hair on coal. Um, 
Okay, you guys are having more conversation outside of me, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just let you all answer each other. So for trimming, even if you don't press that often, do you still recommend trimming every two months? Yeah, trimming has nothing to do with pressing your hair. Trimming has everything to do with your hair growth cycle. So how much you trim is dependent on how much hair growth you have. But how often you trim is really indicative of your the condition of your hair. So if, you're, if your hair is getting really very frayed at the ends, your hair is already due for a trim. But you want to try and catch it you know, every two months before it gets too raggedy because by the time it's gotten raggedy, you've already sustained some level of tangling unnecessarily, which has pulled out you know, numbers of your hair. So the idea is to get it before it gets too bad. You know you're going, you know, if you're going to experience something inevitably, you don't want to wait until it gets really bad. You want to catch it before it gets to that point. And so that's why I recommend every two months. Um, pressing your hair is not going to cause your hair any more um, wear on the ends um, than, than most other styling. Your ends are just older and they get weathered. Um, one thing about should you trim on blow dried hair? I like to trim on blow dried hair, but for customers who don't want any heat to their hair because they've had traumatic experiences, I will do their hair in, in its natural state. So um, another thing about the straight hair. Now I love the job that, that Fawny did, but wearing my hair straight, it's so long. This go round for some reason because I was in the salon so much, I had my hair up on top of my head like I used to wear it when I was relaxed. This is how I used to wear it, it was so long and it would always get in my way. Um, so with it being so long, you're constantly, the ends are constantly, you know, touching stuff like my seat belt in the car, um, my pocketbook, my hair was getting caught in my pocketbook, um, just constantly, you know, in the way. And when I'm in the salon and I'm washing someone's hair, I had to put it up because, you know, I'm leaning over and I'm, you know, cleaning their hair and the hair would be in my face. So, you know, it's when it gets longer, it's, you know, those ends are going to catch on to more things. It's just inevitable. So, um, not so much the heat styling, but just those ends being so long, <laughs> you're going to experience, you know, more, more wear and tear on the ends of your hair. I think, um, there is, there is um, a sentence in the black hair science book that Rita likes to quote from the science of black hair book that when your hair is shorter that is one of the most protective styles but as it gets longer and it starts to you know grow past your shoulders that's when you start to experience a lot of a lot of interaction with other like your scarf hand and hair syndrome haha <laughs> well that happens at any length I think um, but yeah you're experiencing you know wearing a scarf or wearing your jacket oh my Gosh, you know how hard it is for me to wear a coat that has zippers? It drives me crazy. I have to have the zipper all the way up here so that my hair isn't caught in the zippers, you know? Let's see, you too. You too. Private conversations between Rita and everybody. This is Rita's scope, by the way. I'm just stand I'm just a stand-in for Rita. <laughs> Go ahead and tell them. <laughs> Tell the truth. I'm standing for Rita. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So what else? What else? I cannot wait to have this. You can't wait to have... Oh, my gosh. You don't know. Michelle. <laughs> the zippers. <laughs> The um the scarves, just everything when the hair is long. Oh my gosh, my hair c catches on everything. Yeah, yeah. Tell me anything, Rita. <laughs> no, but I love you guys too. And that's why I'm even here. I was so tired before I came on. I was laying down, I was resting. I said, but I just love chatting with you all. So uh, that's why I come on and I try to think of topics. And I said to you, I don't know if you saw the post that I put up on um, Instagram and Facebook, but I said, what are some other topics that you want to talk about? Because I think about things that, as I experience them in the salon, I'm always thinking about what things, you know, the clients are going through. And I think I talk with you all about this. One of the things that, um, you know, people ask me when they see my straight hair is, oh my gosh, how do you grow your hair so long? And, um, you know, I try to remind you that it's not about growing your hair because growing your hair is genetic. 
but it's also about retaining your hair because your hair is dead uh, from the moment it pops out of your scalp. It's dead. So all of this is dead hair, not just the ends. And so you're constantly just maintaining your hair. That's why I always say maintain your hair and keep it in good condition. I was just about to ask you about length retention. Yeah, that's what I'm big about. That's what I'm so big on, length retention. So, you know, it's it's all about maintenance, 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 maintenance. Anything that's dead, you're just maintaining. You're not getting it to grow. It's growing on its own. Your hair is constantly growing. But if you're not seeing length, it's because you're experiencing a lot of breakage. And so what I've been noticing lately with the clients that um, when I tell them, I said, this is where I'm seeing your breakage. This is where I'm seeing your breakage. It usually happens around the perimeter. And so that's an indication that there's something that either they're pressing, you know, they have some friction there, or they have something pulling, some tension there. Or there's some type of material that's rubbing there. It's usually right about here. And even around the front hairline, that's where I see most of the breakage. And then it just starts to seep in and starts to attack like, you know, uh, some people start to get like a mohawk effect if it gets really bad. But uh, one of the main culprits that I find are these head ties. Um, a lot of people don't want to wear their hair just completely down. What about short hairs all over in the scalp? Is that breakage? Um, it depends. You know, if the short hairs are shorter in comparison to the average length of your hair, then that is an indication of breakage. That's how you can pretty much tell. Usually when your hair is shedding, it's shedding after it's reached its terminal end. So depending on your cut, if you had a cut, you know, and it just happened to be that time for that hair to shed, then it's going to shed at a shorter length. But however, if you're just growing your hair out and you're seeing excessive amounts of shorter hair pieces, then that's um, a high indication of breakage. So um, I tend to look at um, my hair, I monitor it every week. I know it seems excessive. In the beginning, I used to be more excessive. I cut down on some of the obsessive stuff. But I always like to measure the amount of hair that comes out to see if I have on average the same amount of hair or if I've got more hair coming out and randomly sometimes I have you know a light amount of hair come out but it's a good idea because we can't see um we can't see so easily with the naked eye just to keep a measure you know side by side so you can see the comparison I don't throw out the previous week until I have the new week so I can have them next to each other and go like this okay same size bigger or smaller because I'm not going to remember from week to week. I need to literally have the comparison. So that's something that you can do and see. I know that when I started doing the um, the flexi rods and the perm rods, I started getting more hairs coming out when I when I rinsed and washed my hair. So that's you know you when you have when you're monitoring it and you can go back and tell what were the things that you were doing that made the difference. You can adjust you know your hair regimen. You've been natural for two and a half years had a professional cut trim all the time. Come back with that question because I missed the last part of it because I was still talking. So yeah, so length retention has to all, everything to do with maintaining your hair. How are you wrapping your hair at night? Are you putting all kinds of like clips and ornaments in your hair? Abena, sometimes after I've trimmed my ends, they still feel frazzled no matter what is cut off. Um, let me answer, Rita. I know that feeling. Um, it, it's, it's if you have gone consistently without cutting off enough ends, that could be the case. Like if you're undercutting, and I know that that happens because so many black women, we don't want to lose our length. So it's just like, don't cut too much. Don't cut too much. So then your stylist may not cut enough just to keep you from being traumatized. Because you can be traumatized if they cut off the amount that you absolutely need. And so what I like to recommend is say, okay, we're going to cut off this much. But you do need to come back in two months because we're going to need to systematically start cutting this down. But I don't want you to leave here and you can't put your hair up in a, in a puff or you can't put your hair in a ponytail. Because then that's going to be you know, um, a horrible experience for you. So we're going to try and take this off systematically. But... You very well just may be under, your hair may be undercut. You may be more in need of a lengthier cut. Um, and then if your hair consistently gets frizzy at the ends, come back with that, come back with that, because I want to finish this one. If your hair consistently, 
you know, is, is just at the ends, very raggedy. Um, you may want to look at, you know, the, the products that you're using. Are you getting enough moisture into your hair? Because if your hair is just too dry, then it, it's, it's going to get, you know, worn out sooner because it's so dry. It needs that moisture. So it could very well also be, you know, your product application, your product choice, uh, how often you're washing and conditioning your hair. You know, it could be a number of factors, but, but your ends do tell you, you know, the condition of that portion of your hair. Do you think it could be down to your diet? Well, your diet is going to help you. Your diet is going to help you um, grow, you know, stronger uh, follicles, which will give you, you know, a better outcome for your hair. And it's also going to help you with your cell production, be stronger. Um, it's going to help you with more nutrients that you need. Your hair is going to grow, but it may grow stronger if you do have a, a better diet. If you're experiencing weak hair in your growth cycle, then yes, having a better diet, especially increasing your, your, your water intake, which will help your, your blood flow to be more fluid. Um, so it can nutri you know, um, get the nutrition to your follicles are also very helpful. Um, you will notice that different people can have different diets and have a different experience. Your genetics does play a large role in the in the way that your hair, you know, the strength of your hair sometimes because it's going to impact, you know, whether your hair is fine, uh, medium, or coarse. So it does have a lot of factors, but if you are experiencing, you know, a lot of pitfalls, then you want to try and shore up all the areas that you can. So you want to increase, you know, um, your, your exercise regimen. You want to make sure you're getting, you know, oxygen to your, to your scalp. Uh, you want to make sure that you're increasing your water intake. You want to make sure that you're eating more, you know, green leafy vegetables. Make sure you're you're consuming proteins. Give your body everything that you need to combat, you know, where it's weak. So if you are experiencing any type of um, excessive, you know, breakage because your hair is weak, then you just do all the things that you know that you can to fortify your hair from the from the, from the first part. Because by the time it gets out here, all you're doing is maintaining it. So start it off in the best way that you can by having a good diet, by consuming good you know, amounts of water, and by exercising because exercising is going to get that oxygen to your scalp. Oxygen as in scalp massage? No, oxygen like when you're on your, I do like a treadmill. You can do like um, the elliptical, some type of cardio exercise. When you're exercising and your body is moving and your, your, your blood is pumping, it's a healthy way for you know, the blood to flow through your body and it will also get the blood flowing to your, to your scalp, which will also you know, get to your follicles and you'll get the nutrition that you need to stimulate the growth, the healthy growth. Do you like Miss Jessie's products, glycerin and petroleum products? I actually have never tried uh, Miss Jessie's products. I do have some samples, but I haven't tried it. You're welcome. And I didn't know that you didn't know that. That's why I shared it. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, you were saying about head scars. It causes breakage on the perimeter. So what should be used? Yeah, I was saying that um, what folks are using is head ties. They're using all kinds of ties because they, they have like little flowers in them. They have decorations. They have, you know, um, paisley or flowers or something because some people just don't like the way their hair looks without some type of ornament in it. And unfortunately, those ladies have experienced a lot of breakage around the perimeter where the tie is pressing, you know, and holding their hair in place. When my hair was shorter, the only thing that I put on my hair to hold it up was my silk scarf. The same silk scarf that I would sleep in. I mean, I would get my scarves from the store. They would be really big. I would go to the cleaners, get them cut down, and, and um, get them tailored. So I have fresh, you know, nice ends. They weren't raggedy. And I would have several scarves out of that same material. But I would only put silk on my hair. Clips like this or... Um, or pins, you know, when styling your hair, they need to be very minimal because this kind of stuff, even though it's made for the hair, it pinches at the hair and makes the hair weak. So anything that you can do um, to keep your hair from, from, you know, experiencing some type of stress or strain or tension is going to help to minimize the excessive wear and tear that it will experience that will lead to breakage. And that's how you retain. That's just one of the ways that you retain length. But there are so many other things that I do in the course of my day. Um, 
Oh, good. Okay, see, I don't know if I should do a block party. I'm okay with Michelle Obama because I love her, but I'm not Michelle Obama. My name is Abena Palmore. <laughs> I'm a natural hair stylist, and we're talking about natural hair. So, um, so, okay. All right. All right, cool. Ladies, if you feel like it, you know what you can do too. So, yeah, um, when, we're, when it comes to, okay, so now we're going to go like this this time. You know it was coming. <laughs> you know it was, they just can't they can't behave. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, so there are other things that I do like um I notice this week I've done things where I said, well, as long as you don't do that too much. Everything in moderation, but everything is cumulative. So like putting on a hat without a scarf, you know that the um the inside depending on the material it could actually cause some friction on your hair if you do that too often if you're always wearing a hat you're always taking off putting it on and you're having that friction on your hair that's going to impact your hair that's going to make your hair weaker so when I was putting my hat on today because it was so chilly out there and I was going to church and coming out of church I'm like I don't have time to put the scarf and all that stuff I'm just going to put it on right now and I'm going to go to the car and it's just going to be a few minutes it's going to be a few minutes but if you do that too often then that becomes, you start to have that cumulative effect. Um, anything that we're doing that we're noticing is potentially damaging, like, I'm going to give you one. Is it true your cycle has an effect on your hair growth? Your cycle can impact your hair growth because your your hormones, um, and especially your, your thyroid in particular, will impact your um, your hair growth cycle. So hormonal imbalances is what it is. If you have a hormonal imbalance, you know, during your during your period, it could impact your your hair your hair growth cycle. But you got to remember your hair your your hair growth cycle is ongoing. Your period is, you know, one moment, you know, in time, like it could be 7 days or so forth. But um but you should definitely if you are concerned about, you know, your hormonal balance, um I would recommend that you check with your doctor and they can check your blood levels and, and check your thyroid and let you know what's going on with your body because what's going on in the inside will definitely impact, you know, your, your hair growth cycle and your cells, you know, replicate much faster. Your hair growth, your hair cells replicate much faster than any other cells in your body. That's why, and I tell my clients this all the time, when people are diagnosed with cancer and they're taking medication or they're going through chemo, the um, medication is designed to attack any uh, potential growth of cancerous cells that replicate really quickly so they wind up attacking your hair cells and that's why a lot of people who are who are experiencing um, cancer um, restoration or health or treatments will experience hair loss so your hair is constantly those cells are constantly replicating so if you are experiencing any imbalance make sure you check with your doctor and they'll let you know so hi Abana do you use anything to moisturize your hair uh, when straightened nope <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> um, I pretty much do like when my hair is in this naturally curly state, what I do on wash day, it's done. It's just done. So I get all the moisture in on wash day. I do the treatment on the day that this is done. And then that's it. They say silk is natural and withdraws moisture like cotton, but satin being made it being man-made is better. I know some people say that silk is, is, is actually absorbing moisture out of the hair, but I have only used silk scarves. I haven't used satin scarves and my hair has been fine. But if you're able to find, you know, a satin scarf and, and you know, it works for you, I always recommend silk or satin, but I use silk. I absolutely have used silk. And the silk that I have used, and it may make a difference. I have both and haven't noticed a difference. Right, so it, it may make a difference. They have silk scarves that are really dainty-like, really like faint and, and fragile, you know, like really, I don't even have any here. I've seen some of those scarves, and I don't use that on my hair. I use a really sturdy silk scarf, and I always show my clients, I'm like, feel this material. It's a thick material, it's strong, it's not dainty, it's not faint, and it works fine. So it could be, you know, how, how woven, you know, the silk is. You know how you can get... Um, you know how you can get sheets for your bed and you can get, um, what is it called, the, the Egyptian uh, cotton and how many counts of it that it has? Perhaps gel stops silk from withdrawing moisture? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Rita. <laughs> I don't know. That That's a thought, I don't, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. 
thread count. Thank you. So it could be, you know, how what the thread count is on, on the silk material that could make the difference. Like I said, the silk scarves that I use are much, much sturdier than some of the, you know, you know, really light um, silk scarves that I've seen on the market. So I would use one that's more sturdy. That's what I always recommend. And where do you purchase your scarves? I got my scarves from Marshalls, which is a, um, a store that's combined with like TG Maxx, TG, no, TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Just any clothing store, I guess, with um, that sells, you know, nice, fine clothing, then you should be able, they may have some scarves that go along with it, you know, to go as accessories for the clothes, but I always use them, you know, for my hair. That's where I usually get them from. And I think they're made, you know, to be worn around the neck, but I use them for my hair. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for the hearts. So, uh, like I said, I just wanted to check in and chat with you all. Um, I'm so glad that we were able to have this conversation tonight. I think I had said this earlier, that the discussion that we're having is just our discussion. If you know, if I feel like it's going to be helpful for anyone who missed it and wants to see it, I will upload this on YouTube. You know, otherwise, um, you know, this was just for us. So I thank you all for tuning in. If you have any other questions, let me know now. Otherwise, it's almost nine o'clock and I'll be ready. Abena, you are always classy and professional and informed. Thank you so much, Dion. Me too. This was, you know, I, sometimes I'm just chatting with you guys and I really, I cannot tell how, how, you know, how helpful it is, but I'm glad. Thank you so much for letting me know. Hey, Yolanda, I didn't know you were on. How are you? Uh, oh my gosh. Thank you, Rhonda. Good to see you as well. Yeah, cool. See, I don't even see everyone who comes on. So I thank you all for tuning in. Thank you so much. I'm glad this was helpful to any and all. And as always, you know, let me know throughout the week any other topics that you would like to go over. Just want the name of the product you recommended. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Okay. <laughs> so here it is. Oh, yeah, good. Thank you, Yana. Thank you for putting that up there. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> Hydrotherma Naturals. All right, cool, cool, cool. Aw, oh, thank you, Judith. Thank you all. Thank you all. Rita, did you leave? Where are you? <laughs> I hope she didn't fall asleep. Uh, have a good night. Great information tonight. Have a great week. You too, Michelle. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. And if you have any topics that you absolutely want to discuss, please let me know throughout the week, okay? Thank you, Benny. Always helpful and good. Oh, thank you, Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Shaykar. Hey, how are you? Uh, very much. Thank you, Michelle. That's uh, the fourth Michelle. So thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all have a wonderful night and a wonderful week. And I'll see you either on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. <laughs> thank you all. Have a great night. Take care. <laughs> You're the fifth. Oh, my gosh. Five Michelles. They dominate the scope. Well, it's glad to, I'm glad to have you all. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Good night.